Yeah. Drum roll, please. No drum roll? Oh! Hey! Hey! -oh. <laughs> I present to you Fountain a la RJ. We're good. <laughs> Problem solved. So as Murphy's Law has it, the gator pump is completely busted. Um, you can see the water is getting pretty dirty. I uh, came in this morning and thought, oh, well, probably just clogged up. It's completely busted. So, uh, And I have a million things on my plate today trying to get ready to leave on this trip. So, uh, oh, well, we're going to hit the store and see if we can find something, maybe at Home Depot or something like that, that'll work at least until I get back from the trip. And then we can try to get a proper pond filter. So, uh, oh, well, that's just the way things go. Got to roll with the punches. So uh, off to the store to try to find a pond filter. One thing I've really learned about in life is to do your best to roll with the punches. You know, I mean, things always work out one way or another. Uh, sure, we'd like things to be smooth and everything to go great in life. Who wouldn't? But the truth is, everyone has their trials and tribulations. You know, sometimes life is really stressful and some people have much more uh, things to bear. You know, obviously, our life with all the things that we have going on sometimes can be very, very complicated. Whereas, but for some people, even just waking up in the morning and and maybe you know the air conditioning's not working or the lawnmower didn't uh, start or whatever the case is we all have that that uh, that kind of cross to bear every single day and uh, the thing I've kind of learned is that you just can't really stress out too much about it um, you do your best you know things come up you try to fix them you move on to other things uh, try to stay as positive as you can in life and and quite frankly you know the more popular and successful in ways we become you know life has become a lot more challenging I mean I'll be honest because it's pretty amazing when you wake up in the morning and and sometimes see people say the most hateful things about you when they don't even know who you are or even some of the people around you disappoint you um, it's difficult but you know I always try to take that high road I believe in what I'm doing uh, I know that you know although you know I'm not perfect. Uh, I try to do the best I can do for the people around me and the people that support me. Uh, and that's all you can kind of do. I remember there was a, a quote from like Mother Teresa that said something like, you know, I wake up every day and I try to be the best person I probably possibly can be. And every day I fail. But I wake up the following morning and I try to do it all over again. And uh, I kind of live my life that way. You know what I mean? I do my best to stay positive, to not let the little things bother me, uh, at least not a tremendous amount. And and uh, just you know move on and try to find happiness and sometimes the littlest things you know so let's say you're having a really stressful day um you know, maybe you can just uh, look up and see how beautiful the sky is or, or smell the spring or summer in the air or, you know, you see a pretty flower, or, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? Just try to take some happiness from even some more uh, unusually difficult challenges in life and, and you'll find if you can just kind of slowly surround yourself with positivity and beauty that uh, those things that seem so amazing and so hard to overcome won't be nearly as hard. So, uh, Hey, we're off to get uh, an alligator pump and it'll all work out fine. I mean, what's the worst that happens is, uh, you know, I get a pump that isn't the greatest, but it'll work for the next seven or eight days. And when I get back, I'll get the right pump. So instead of freaking out about it, I'm just going to take care of it and move on. All right, guys, I think that this is gonna do just fine for me right here. This is pretty similar to the one we're using right now, so I'm gonna just take this and get out of here.
Trap off. Yeah. You ready to uh, fix this gator tank? I guess so. <laughs> let's uh, let's try to figure this filter out. I mean, it looks like it's pretty pretty self-explanatory, pretty much real similar to the one that we already have. And right. again, you know, what we'll do is we'll just if this one doesn't work out, this will at least get us through until we're back. Cool. So, uh, so all right. So, what do you think? You gonna mastermind it or or shall I? I insist. You insist. All right, let's get going. Cool. Okay, so zip pump on the bottom huh. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, this one goes through this side, right? Because, it, oh, it, look at they nope. got little suction cups. Yeah. Doesn't it go through the thing go there? Yes. Okay, so, see the little suction cuppies? And they just squeeze it on the bottom so that it goes through. And then this just goes through here and keeps the hose in, or the, the electrical cord in place. Then do we put uh, that little tubey on there? One of these little tubes. This little tubey? We'll just keep trying. God, it's like rocket science. We'll just keep trying tubes. Oh yeah, it looks like, yeah. Oh, that's what it looks like. It looks like maybe these oh. go, nope, nope, nope. Looks like these, this screws into here. It does. And then, after that screws into there, then those tubes go on. God, could you imagine us trying to change a light bulb? How many people would it take? Uh, it would take at least four of us, I don't know. <laughs> Me and Trevor changing a light bulb. We would be uh, looking at it, staring at it, and then we'd have to call in the the, the Calvary to tell right. us what we're doing. Right. So, so it looks pretty simple, really. So these are just, just to stack the pipe. Does this not have um, a suction thing back and forth like the other one? Uh, you no, know what? Oh, I mean, oh, here it is. Yeah, there you go. That, you where does that go? That one, right on top. Or you could do goes a on top. one. Or like a sprinkler one. Let's do the sprinkler one. You want to do the sprinkler one? Yeah, let's do the sprinkler one. For the fountain. I think the fountain would be pretty cool. Cool. Oh, that's so, got to go on first. So, yeah, so yes. now the filters, pads go on. Nice and snug. The top. Cool. All right. Click. We got the little sprinkle top here. Little fountain. All right, so let's give cool. this a shot, man. We're gonna go, man. Let's see if this works. I'm gonna unplug this one. Yep. Oh, this one's already that one's unplugged. That one's already unplugged. All right, so might as well just take this one out because it's garbage. So let's plug that bad boy in and see if this thing works. Drum roll, please. No drum roll. Oh! Yay! Hey <laughs> that's pretty awesome, huh? That's really neat. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. That's uh, that's kind of how it goes, you know. I mean, you got the gator pond, and uh, now it'll be all kind of cleaned up. We'll probably have to drain it because it got kind of goopy over the weekend um, because the pump obviously went out. Uh, so we'll probably drain it, refill it, and then this should keep it nice and clean. And we'll see what happens when I get back from China. If it's not working, we'll do something else. If this one's working good, uh, which I'm sure it will, we're good to go. So. There you go, see? When a big problem arises, it's really not that big of a deal. You just get it done, you move on to the next thing, right? I present to you Fountain a la RJ. We're good, <laughs> problem solved. One of the things you'll see on this vlog is certainly um, a lot of my animal adventures, my travel, just the exciting things that I'm gonna do. But I also want you guys to understand who I am and why, uh, or how I should say, it is to run a reptile business you know so uh, I'm gonna kind of continue to bring you guys into my life when it comes to that uh, today everyone is a little stressed out because we're so close to leaving for China and uh, there's a lot of pressure on everyone's plate so um, and I know that this is the brains of the operation you can see this guy's working real hard oh yes <laughs> I'm actually watching the vlog <laughs> final watch before I export exactly Every time. Exactly. No, Nico's really good. He, he's he's always working. He's got a lot on his plate. He's always he's got the vlog. He's got snake bites. He ends slates and, and brands. You know, five word animal facts. Uh, plus, I always have a lot of extra stuff with like reels and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, Nico, the uh, the big smiley emoji, is always doing good. That's On me. the other hand, Steph is a workhorse here. She's probably <laughs> stressing out like can't believe because. So this is this is how my day starts almost every day. Dead serious. I come in, I talk to Steph and Nico, and I'm usually this is at some point of our conversation. It's just like Steph, 
if you could do me a favor, and I usually say that about 25 times every single day. Oh, good morning, Miranda. Get me Isaac. I don't see my breakfast here or my eggs here. Where are my eggs? Where's that piece of paper I had in my hand yesterday morning? Girls need new surfboards or boogie boards or something for spring break. Pick up my shoes from Blahnik and then go get Patricia. So you guys hanging in there, I know it's stressful. Yeah. For sure. Just remember to snap. It. Just remember to snap. Oh yeah, we're Oh yeah, I, you gotta snap again. Yeah, that's the other thing is that uh, these two remind me of things when I forget. So I have a Snapchat takeover on uh, the, this is Insider today. So I've been snapping all day, but I keep on telling them to remind me to snap. And of course they're uh, they're doing a good job. So uh, so we've been having fun with Snapchat. And by the way, you can find me on my normal Snapchat at Snake Bites TV. So it's like I said, you'll get to know those guys a lot more because I'm going to talk to them a lot and uh, see the day to day. Yeah, and then uh, hey, you know, if you want, you can comment down below questions you have of what it's like to to do reptiles full time or even just work with animals full time. Or if you have any questions at all, I'm always reading the comments. I'm trying to interact with you guys as much as I can. So uh, feel free to do it now. Again. By the time you're watching this vlog, I may be in China, so it might be a little slow to respond, but Steph usually does good when I'm not here, and certainly when I do have connectivity, I'm going to be answering as much as I can, but uh, chances are pretty good by the time you're watching this, I'm already either in flight or on the ground over in China, so, uh, oh my gosh. Okay, we got a bunch of animals going out today, but I have to pack a pretty decent order of leopard geckos, about 100 leopard geckos that are going to go out, so, uh, so I got to get to it. Uh, these guys are actually going out to California and to a really good source that has really good pet shops that he deals with. So, so good. We'll uh, have to find these babies and put them in cups. All right, guys. So those of you that don't know who I am or are just starting to watch my videos, you might be thinking that you're seeing a lot of commercial snake and reptile breeding. Uh, for those of you that know me, obviously you know what's going on here. But I want to address a few things. You know, if you don't know what's happening, you see snakes and other animals and kind of shoe boxes, compartmental. I want to talk about that. Most reptiles, you know, us as humans, we think, oh, they need lots of space and and they should be like a dog or a cat or something like that. But the truth is, most reptiles actually prefer a slightly tighter spot. It makes them feel comfortable. You've got to remember that almost all snakes and a lot of lizards actually will spend the majority of their time crammed into little holes really that's where they're comfortable. That's going to avoid predation and other things like that. So we basically simulate that by giving them a relatively small amount of space and we want to keep it really clean and efficient. So that's the whole idea. Now you got to remember we're breeding really for the pet trade for the most part. So these eventually will go to homes where people will care for them like they're their lifelong pets or at least that's what we hope so anyways. So I don't ever want you to think that we don't care for our animals or that we're somehow abusing our animals because that couldn't be further from the truth. That being said, we are a commercial house, so it is a little bit different. And I'm always struggling with the kind of bigger production of things. I'll be honest with you, the day that I stop worrying about maybe having too many animals and overdoing it uh, is the day I should probably get out of this. And most of you that do know me know I did a huge downsize just recently, about six or eight months ago, to a much more manageable collection because I felt that we had grown to a size where I could no longer really care for the animals on the level that I wanted to. Now that doesn't mean that every animal that we keep is doing fantastic because the truth is whenever you're keeping any living basically type of a breeding stock or anything for that matter, you're always going to get a small percentage of animals that just don't thrive. And that's our job to make sure that those one, two, or three percent, whatever it is, as a matter of fact, the statistic is actually any living population has about a three percent sick or mortality rate. That being said, we certainly want to keep it below that number if at all possible but when we do have that very small percentage we're trying to do the best we possibly can to make sure the animals survive and are healthy or as happy as they possibly can be but that's just the downside of commercial breeding and trust me guys I'm an animal lover so I'm struggling right along with the people that are watching right now I'm struggling right along with you about am I doing the right thing but the fact is I really believe that if someone has a pet reptile they start opening their eyes towards the bigger problems in the world and start thinking about 
conservation. And you know, I really do believe what Steve Irwin said when he said that, you know, if people can love it and touch it, they can fall in love with it and understand it and they'll fight for the rights of those animals. So that's it for me today. I'm done, I'm out of here, hitting the gym, trying to get some of all this stress and anxiety out of me and uh, do some cardio and some, some lifting and then uh, I'll be back at it tomorrow. Oh, 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 oh